Hello, film you community. You asked who we are? We are Bisms, a black owned, women led, multicultural marketing company. Our mission is to transform the tech landscape through the fusion of cutting edge content curation and cultural significance. Our goal is to cultivate innovative, engaging, and culturally relevant solutions that entertain, stimulate revenue growth, and foster the expansion of global fandom and communities with impactful reach. Who I am? I am Reagan Lee Thomas, the CEO of Bisms, and joining me is Kalisha Davis, the CTO. Together, we champion diversity and content, and con I'm sorry, and confront systematic isms. Our vision birth our generation mobile, aiming to be a personalized gateway to players entering the world of esports. This is our client, John Baton, the drum major of social change. Pioneers a <laughs> pioneers a new era of digital athleticism, championing women and LGBTQIA and esports competitors. He's committed to redefining authenticity in artistry sports within the realm of esports. Without further ado, John Baton. So thank you. Welcome for having me. I am coming straight out of Las Vegas. And I'm so excited because it's simple, sweet, and to the point. Three minutes, three batons, and three stories. And so walk with me on this story. Um, grandma, right? My grandmother here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 4th of July parades, Memorial Day parades, the Christmas parades, we'd go down and we were that parade family. And I would watch the majorettes and I'd watch the drum majors and I would play with my mother's baton. Okay, so this is literally my mother's baton. Imagine me being five and six years old, hitting it off my head and acting like I could really do something, strutting down the alley and whatnot. And mom, I'm going to be the drum major. I'm going to be that twirler. And all of a sudden I got really quick in understanding that this wasn't something a boy should do. This is something that was a little, um, mm, are you going to be a little sissy? Um, black boys don't do that. You need to play basketball. This is a girl thing, but I couldn't figure out how this was a girl thing when all you had to do was flip it. And I would go to Kmart. Now, just by a show of hands, you guys might remember Kmart, which was now, as we call it, Walmart, right? So Kmart to Walmart is what this whole experience became for us here at BISM. And as the client, John Baton, little John Baton, understood real quick about racism, sexism, heterosexism, and it just wasn't good enough. And I realized after my grandmother literally got my first baton, so this would be my first baton. This was once upon a time red, and you can imagine it sitting on the shelf and it looked like a magic wand. And I was like, can I get it? And my grandmother finally said, you know what, I'm gonna buy it for you. You just can't take it home. So dad, granddad, folks were just like, no, that has to stay down your grandmother's house. And so I mastered this and I mastered the game, right? I figured out how to twirl to the level of where I became a national world champion, where I became the first African-American and male at Penn State University, where I was on America's Got Talent. And so I'm here now as the international judge, right? Judging across the country, realizing it's not about me. Take it to the next level. And where that next level is, is the next generation. And so now with the real baton, I'm here passing the baton to the next generation, right? But how? Because Kmart isn't how they talk anymore. That's how I talked. Walmart's how they're talking. But what does it mean in Walmart? How are they going to pick it up? This isn't going to work. This silver stick is traditional, but it's got to take it to the next level. And here, this company, Bism, has created the tech baton. And so through LiDAR, radar, LED, this baton connected to an app will take it to the next space. And so today, we're here presenting this out to the world, partnering in a way in which CMU is able to have us have the platform to say, who wants to come on board, right? Who wants to be involved? Who wants to help us create this next prototype to take it to a metaverse world that leads it to a place where everyone can be involved? We're talking about the Japanese. We're talking about England. We're talking about the French. We're talking about Sweden. This is an international sport, but who would know it?
so we get to bring it to the masses, right? John Baton, now a grown man, an international judge, gets to have a product that can get into the hands and can be in an app form that takes it to the next level. So who's involved? Who's ready to be involved with the, our generation? Metaverse world, new tech baton with an app. And I thank you today and say, come on board and be a part of the family. It's free. It's easy to do. It'll be international and it'll be a game changer in the esport arena. And with that, I say thank you for having us and we enjoy and enjoy your spring break. And thank you, CMU. Hey, do we have any other volunteers today? Tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody online, feel free to unmute. Okay, well, we do do these at the beginning of each of our connects. Uh, next week is spring break, but then they'll start back up after that as well. So uh, check out our schedule and sign up for those. Uh, but we will get started today. I want to thank Demola for coming. Demola is an innovator, author, journalist, songwriter, musician, engineer, entrepreneur, publisher, executive, educator, technologist, and performing artist with 25 plus years of activity in the hip hop community. He has commercialized and distributed millions of copies of multimedia products he created. He also serves as CEO of Toys Electronics LLC, a startup at the Swartz Center at CMU. Toys Electronics was recently a semi-finalist for the BNY Mellon Social Innovation Challenge administered by Innovation Works. So I will let you get started. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, today is Toy Story. And telling the Toy Story is something that brings a lot of joy to me. Um, I was a 15-year-old myself at Syracuse studying mechanical engineering and economics. I learned how to code doing Pascal. So that takes you guys to the early era. But I became, you know, so I was a Mechie. Um, gaming has always been in my core, but we're telling the story of the intersection of hip hop with tech, right? And when I tell this story, I actually talk about Cool Herc was a technologist. Grandmaster Theodore was a technologist, you know, um, Grandmaster Flash was a technologist. Hip hop is the music culture that embraced technology to create their form of expression. So when I hear that people from the same communities that created that culture are not able to get into tech, I'm like, that's an oxymoron. We're missing something here, right? So I did not do that with my son, right? I created the intersection of hip hop and technology with the launch of toys. What you see here is the very first issue of toys. Cars, Gadgets, Video Games, 2007. Five years after this, Wale would be 15 and at Carnegie Mellon, not only at Carnegie Mellon level, but venture level, pitching the Peter Thiel 20 under 20 Transforming Tomorrow documentary at CNBC. So we're not talking about just being capable to get an education in tech. We're talking about being able to be in the same cohort with people like the founder of Figma and we bring receipts. So toys, I've always been a hip hop entrepreneurship evangelist who will be rap's first billionaire. We're not gonna get into politics of who did what and what, we just talk about the business, right? So from 2002, which is 22 years ago, I was parading, but earlier than that, I was a member of the DC Chamber of Commerce. And I said, this industry is gonna have billions in impact. 50 Cent will be on our cover through um, a good relationship I have with one of my classmates at Howard after I transferred there from Syracuse. I also was ahead of bringing diversity and women and amplifying women voices in business. So it also made sense that I would do toys in 2007. 
And I'll also bring hip hop and graphic novels in Steam. And we're also showing you that now, and here is a video of what we've been able to do. This current workshop is actually one of two workshops we're going to be doing today. This first workshop is asset creation. The next workshop is going to be 3D animation and 3D modeling. And it's with a different set of students. But what they're doing now is writing their own stories, creating their own art, creating their own digital assets. And we're going to teach the students how to integrate these digital assets into a virtual reality game. Check, check, check. And he, doesn't, he doesn't see it. So what did you make this weapon do? So what we were thinking was like a villain in the story like kind of created that a long time ago. Uh -huh. And he like dolls oh, over from him. kind of think he was like a villain. Uh -huh. But it turns out it was just like a well, how about guy. But now he wants his sword back. So he's trying to get it back. So what we have here is where the students are going to record an audio. This is a HyperX. It's really like the HyperX content creator studio. You could actually set this up in your home. So we have the HyperX keyboard, HyperX mouse, HyperX gaming pad, and we use an Audacity. So then the students, what we're gonna do then after they record their stories is export out their stories, put it on the USB, and then integrate that into the virtual reality game, along with the visual art that they're creating. You create your own backstory, your own character, and our goal is to teach you how you could create your <laughs> own world. Because a fun fact about this story was I started creating The Great Deity Da. I commercialized The Great Deity Da when I was 19. So that's when I was able to put it on vinyl in 96 and distribute it around the world. But nobody told me how to do it. I just had this idea of this character created the character and created music and I didn't use my face I was like I don't want people to see my face I just want them to see the character and hear the character so now we're able to teach students like you how you can create your own universe and create your own characters using software like audacity is free to download so when you record your audio it's something you could download at home a microphone there are hundred dollar microphones you could get to record and then you could play around with music and basically write your own animated stories and create your own characters what you see here is an art piece that was created the ability for toys which shows gaming technology and cars this is a project we did with the carnegie mellon music department and this project went all over the world and it's available on itunes google play amazon spotify so i have the smartwatch that line gets to you. He said, hey, what's up? Let me get to the movie. So, without further ado, you guys could take turns if you want to. I'll step back and let him continue. Now, for we those actually also here, work in a breakdancing video we game actually work with the concept. The so, there's never been like a hip hop breakdance video game that I know about. Now, that's not like, now that's not party, and, you know, you know, and they all you know, got to play Fortnite and they all these dances. dances. When you had a but great institution like that, I'm a hip hop album. artist. And I've always a wanted to be a barrier breaker. I make pure hip hop. So why shouldn't a smart music. device? So it's like integrate. 90s hip hop, but I'm influenced by the cool play technology. Who's been in my and magazine. Make the computing device on your wrist. And Eric B. and Rock Kim. So why the shouldn't we control the aesthetics of the whole gaming system? So he's going to show you this. And, and some you can play with an interactive you could actually create here too. So that's part of the 3D animation part of this workshop where you able to actually download this app for free and then in your own spare time play around with creating animated characters and learning 3D modeling, which leads into doing things like Maya and fusion and engineering and making products and hardware and, and all sorts of stuff. 
So again, thank you for participating. You guys are very bright to be here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So, and do I go back, do I stop my share to go back to the, um, Okay, so what you see here is my own thing. I did this as an 18-year-old at Howard, created my own comic book, my own avatar, my own brand. Culture dictates commerce. What you're seeing is a whole new innovation, a whole new delivery because I thought, why don't you put knowledge in the comic books? Why don't you put sci-fi? This was Afrofuturism before they called it Afrofuturism. You had to be a groundbreaker. So 50 Cent actually was in the first issue of Toys. They had a spread with his product that he was doing with General Motors. And you see him here with me with G-Unit. Um, he also had his own tech company, Sync. He worked with Intel. He also had headphones. So he was a pioneer that saw things. He had his own video game, Bulletproof. So I, I really appreciated being, him being a groundbreaker because he was way ahead of what other entrepreneurs in hip hop were doing. Some things succeeded, some things failed, but nothing is guaranteed. The risk-taking he did, though, was what really inspired me. So then, how do we build this out, though? Toys, 2007. Then I had this issue of the magazine, Owners, and you see Little Wayne changes the game. But that issue of the magazine was a groundbreaker. Because in that issue of the magazine, I collaborated with Epic Games, you know, Fortnite. And I will have eSports, where I actually did their launch event in Raleigh, which is where they're based. This is 15 years ago, right? I'm actually doing a launch party, bringing Epic Game employees, bringing students from Duke, Students from St. Augustine, students from Shaw, students from North Carolina NT, students from the whole research triangle to build their own competitive gaming event to collaborate from different backgrounds. We had sponsors like, you look at it right here, GameStop, Marvel Comics, IGDA, right? You're giving away merch. And you the biggest thing, too, is teaching people how they could also get into the industry. Because it's not only gaming, but how could you actually work for Epic Games? And now you're hearing from the executives. So I even had the president at the time, Mike Caps from Epic Games, come and hang out. But here's the biggest thing. All of that activity inspired my son, who was 10 years old at the time, to get on his journey. So Wale looked at all these products, consumer electronic products that I was featuring in this first of its kind hip hop and tech magazine. I was going to CES since 2014, 20 years. Using my engineering background to tell the story to new audiences. And the biggest audience was my own child who was a 10 year old. He saw all these products and said, why aren't they sustainable? And he would, draw solar panels on some of these tech, and then he will come out with his own idea for self-powered smart glasses. And here's his actual sketch, right? This sketch became a product that will be the centerpiece of his college application to Harvard, to Princeton, to MIT, to Silicon Valley, and of course, CMU. You're able to take a young black kid at 10, expose him to tech, using hip hop culture, 
and showing him how he could now bring his own innovation, which is sustainability and ecotech, and have him think about it. So he's showing you this design. And then I'm like, well, why don't we think about how you solve the engineering problems? You're actually seeing what he wrote as the different components. Because we went together and started researching into the engineering. This is my 14 and 15 year old. This is what we were working on. And we had a maker lab in our kitchen. Let's start thinking about how to tinker on this. Because this is just a design. This is engineering. And what you see here is the output. In this picture is over $270 billion in value created, including companies like Figma, people like Dylan Fields. Here's Wally. I had moved. Now, I'm a total renegade. I'm not for everybody. I had had my son raised in inner city DC and then I had him raised in Appalachia. I had him learning Mandarin at age four. I'm like, you can't be in the box. I don't care if people like me or not. I like myself. I'm unique. And you have to have the courage as an entrepreneur to be unique because I'm like, there are billions of people in the world. You're going to self-select who you're going to be with? Cool. I want to reach everybody. And I'm going to teach my son to be able to communicate with people from all over the world. So that even if you're isolated, you still have a common human thread to build upon. So what you see is actually, here is his pitch. Here's what he pitched this Silicon Valley. At 15, I showed you the design. Here it is in front of the PayPal map. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Obawale Idu. I'm a 15 year old Nigerian American graduating from high school this May. My plans are the Dale Fellowship for the Carnegie Institute of Technology. It is my goal to be disruptive and providing. And you heard that Carnegie Institute of Technology. We're still here. That was. 12 years ago, we're still here. Access to mobile technology. Now, imagine life without electricity and all the things that we benefit from, gone. And unfortunately, that is the reality of 1.5 billion people. And how can we change that? Well, what if there was a device that was affordable, self-sustainable, and as accessible as a solar calculator? Well, introducing the solar arm, a pair of self-powered smartphone sunglasses. Now, Let's look at some key mobile markets. In Africa, Asia, and Latin America, it's projected for over 5 billion mobile users by 2016. And currently, mobile technology is used for health, education, and business. And the Soul Arm is a perfect device to fit this need. The Soul Arm will use an alloy that can become highly magnetized with only a small change in temperature. And with the solenoid wrapped around it, it can create an electric current. And in warm climates, this device will always remain charged. The lenses will use high sensitized solar cells, which are inexpensive and flexible and can be used with little light. Solar arm will also use energy efficient components such as the ARM M0 Plus chipset and Bluetooth 4.0, thus making this device profitable and can be sold at a retail price of under $100. Now, imagine. In the classroom, a teacher could use this device to just project a lesson to his or her students. Imagine a place with still no light or electricity, the flash on the camera can be used as a flashlight. And imagine a place is still without 3G or data connection, you can still use the SD card to share the next big business idea, invention, medical diagnosis, or anything, a cure for a disease. And how about we make this into a reality? Thank you. What you see there is what's possible when you dream big. How do we make it big again?
Sorry, everybody. Yes, when you dream big and have the audacity to go beyond, you have to want to voyage to the to the to the ether. You have to be a scarce and think you you don't care if you get too close to the sun. Because I've never seen anybody go from Ward A DC to be in that cohort. I've not seen it repeated either. That's the core of what we're building at Toys. And I'm like, I've been in the roughest neighborhoods across America. I've seen a lot. But this is fact. I could transfer what I know to my son. Why can't we bring technology to do it? So when people say, well, what are they building at Toys? Why is it this? Why don't you go simple? I'm like, you don't know the story. I took a kid from Ward A, D.C., with the gorillas, how you like the, the urban jungle, Queensbridge. I've been through all them hoods. Zone three, I don't care where you're talking about. I've been there. Certified bona fide. But you're taking people from that environment. You've been in that environment and you here and you're in Silicon Valley with a disruptive idea. And now you're saying that just the fact that we're here. It's transferable to a whole generation. There's tens of millions of people in America that don't believe this is possible. What if you could inspire them through gaming? What if you do? I told you I was doing events with Epic. Here's the receipts. I also told you guys, I did a, I did esports with Madden. Here it is. Here's the flyers. Look at the flyers. When I say I was in zone three, look at that right there. South the cab. I'm in the hood. I did it in Connecticut. I was at UTEP. I was everywhere. I was outside. There was nobody that set the guideline on what you should do. I pioneered it. The courage to break a barrier. Look at these different communities. I was bringing headphones into urban communities, into avatars. You're seeing this picture, Toys Nation. You're seeing S Lounge, that's in downtown Raleigh. You're seeing employees of Epic Games wearing avatars, so that's cosplay. This is 2008. This is 16 years ago. And we were already advanced and seeing where the future needed to be as far as real time 3D, esports, college students, multi city, bringing diverse audiences. Look at the demographics of all the people in this esports community. I thought. This is where the future will be. Then we started building. So you see that poster board. We actually were taking people's scans and working on real-time 3D then. Here's a fun fact. On our website, I used to leave a free link for people to download Unreal Engine. I really thought we could build the capacity there. I'm doing it now. And what you see is the framework of this Toys Nation. I worked with a mentor of mine, Dr. Joseph Salter, who was teaching at the Atlanta Institute of Art. Um, and you see Aerie there, Prototerra, even people like Chris Keneve and what they're doing at Georgia Tech. We were way advanced. Then 2008 and 2009 hit, we know what that is. But what you see now is real-time rendering. All of this is how Wale was able to benefit from. Then there was another angle too. So I saw that EA, you have all these athletes. Why don't we tell their stories beyond the game? Why don't I figure out what they're doing in the off season? Well, they have charities, they have foundations, they're engaging with the community. So I was like, well, 
Let me get access. You know Reggie Wayne. He's going to probably be a future Hall of Famer. Vernon Davis, he won a Super Bowl. And you see them in person, but then you also see their avatar. Then you show actual global audiences the fact that you could be an avatar. These are all things they're trying to pioneer now. I was years ahead because I saw that people will communicate through their avatars. So you see them and you see their real avatars. But what was also powerful was not only did I introduce my son to that aspect, how about people that actually build things? So he was able to get exposed to people like Ralph Gilles, who he met in person in Virginia. And he actually drove down to Virginia to a dealership with his own nephew in a Dodge Dart at that time. So I thought, not only am I able to tell my son things, I'm able to bring him superheroes in the industry who could share their knowledge with him. And he was able to actually be inspired by one of the greatest designers of all time, Rob Gilles. I also have people like Henrik Fisker. With Fisker Automotive. And he actually has a car that's going to be built not far from here. About 45 minutes from here, he has the, a new vehicle called the Pier that will be built in Lordstown, Ohio. So what you see here is, he was featured here. This is 2009. This is the type of exposure I was given to my son. At the apex of the industry, here's what people do. Here's what you could do. Here's how it connects to gaming. People like Earl Lucas. He was able to see all of these people in design and engineering. People like Bill Geese. And of course, once he got to CMU, he needed his first internship. Now that relationship with EA, I said, well, you know what? I have a son at CMU, he's 17. He's what? Yeah, he's 17, but he's a junior. 17 year old junior. Yeah, he's a junior at CMU at 17. What? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we have a role for him. I was like, well, you know what? Why don't I bring him by the studio and let's talk? So I'd already gone to EA Sports, did a number of coverages in Tiburon in Florida. And they were like, can you come down during 4th of July weekend? I was like, yeah. So we would meet Roy Harvey, who's now VP of Mobile, but at the time he was general manager of EA Sports. And him and Wally would hit it off and they created a role for him. As a disruptor now, you break doors, open pathways. He will also chime in virtually, and this is at Hunt Library. I never thought about being selfish and giving the game to myself. I always shared with others. One of the students who I would share with is Lucy Gao, who was a room, who was a neighbor of my son, and she created Scale AI. Roy Garvey virtually chimed in at Hunt Library at a hackathon event we would do. And students would ask him anything for 30 minutes. This is a general manager of a game studio doing over a billion dollars. FIFA, Madden, and you have students here at CMU being able to just ask them, hey, let me pick your brain. How do you do this? How do you do that? These are the frameworks of what we're building at Toys. Technology and gaming should be able to democratize access to knowledge at the apex of an industry. It shouldn't be constrained to your privilege. I'm not privileged. I came from the mud. Hand to hand, quote from my man, Tony Ayo, been going hand to hand since the real rock sand. I've been, they were like, Demola, you the best at hand to hand combat. And what that meant was my guerrilla marketing techniques were the best in the game. Because I took that to millions of dollars, direct marketing. 
coast to coast, city to city. You'll see me here, and now people are here like, wow, Demola's not here. No, I'm on the ground. Ground game. You got to gain territory because it's still human-to-human -human interaction. So Roy Harvey, and now back to Lil Wayne because Lil Wayne was the cover artist on the issue that featured all of this tech. And we've had a long relationship with Wayne and 50. So now you bring in tech and Lil Wayne also is a skateboarder. He's also done things with Samsung. He's also had apps. So he's also a strong digital native. And you're able to leverage his knowledge as a gateway to get people to be exposed to the culture. You're able to show people that it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your sexuality, it doesn't matter your identity. Anybody could thrive if you give them the right tools and give them the right cultural context to understand how technology could be useful. And with that, thank you. I'm open for questions. Um, if anybody online wants to also ask questions, I'm open for questions. But that is the Toy Story. That gives you the background of Toy Steam. And why am I so confident it will work? You know, there's students like Kennedy Thompson, who's just got into game design school. So we took a program through a joint master's accelerated class that we created with DTC and Howard University. So HBCU students and kids at Howard could work together. There's people like Timothy Brown, who's, in, who's now gonna be a rising junior, who's here at Tepper. You know, there's a lot that we've been able to break barriers with to democratize and say, your background doesn't matter. Knowledge is transferable. We just need to put it in the right context for you to understand and appreciate. And with that, do I stop the share or do I, am I able to keep it up? Yep. And I'm open for anybody's questions. Yes. Um, what would you say has been the biggest um, challenge? When you're a pioneer, there's a lot of loneliness in it because you're trying to tell people a vision of something that they can't see and the courage to take that risk because you know you're going to sacrifice. I think of... Um, Harriet Tubman, who's building the Underground Railroad. And she was like, I could have taken thousands more if they could believe that they'll be free, right? Let me take you all to Buffalo. Let me get you all to Canada. Let me get you out of this. It's like, there is a way out. But people wouldn't believe her, right? And she went through so many life challenges. You know, her personal relationships was fraught with pain and trauma. So, so it's like the personal toll to see this oasis, right? And know that the pursuit of it will come with a lot of burden because somebody has to put the flag up. Somebody has to go to the moon and say it's possible. Because if you don't put that flag up, nobody believes, nobody would take that risk. What I'm showing you here is like, this is possible. It's taken the industry 16 years to try to do what I was doing on my own with no investment. Now we're venture back, but we had no investors because I was telling people you should correlate the athletes in the game with avatars. Now Meta's like, oh, let's bring the Oculus. We were doing that. We were already like, you should have a wearable device that could project to get them here. But when you believe, you stick with it, you evolve. There are different journeys that it's going to take you through. We were going to do hardware. Now we're doing software, gaming, interactive entertainment. That's not where we started. We had elements of that, and you see that. But where was it going to be? So how did you, what would you lean on? What would you change? And hardware didn't work, so we pivoted. And now this is where we're finding traction. And now the industry is saying, here's where we need to go. And eventually, I feel like, being that we have the experience, being where we already validated things, we could really accelerate with the right capital behind us because we have the expertise. I know the nuances. I know, oh, this will work, that won't work. And let's go.
Are there any questions online? Yeah, Wale. Yeah, I wanted to say with so much accomplished with so little evenings is the next step where we can go with this, especially with a lot of the challenges. And I feel like a lot of my generation is going to see, uh, feel kind of jaded. But what you just showed is how you could achieve so much to the right ambition and challenge and to be able to overcome. So what do you think is the next step? I'd say that one of the reasons why we tell people, let me go into the next step really is what we're building diversity. Because at the core of it is, believe yourself as a superhero. My superhero version of myself, I'm Demola Itawu, but my superhero version is the great deity die. It's like, why are you calling yourself the great deity die? Why are you calling yourself a deity? I'm like, I have to be that to overcome this monstrous obstacle of pioneering something that doesn't exist. You have to imagine yourself as a superhero version of yourself. You have to imagine, give people the ability to think like, okay, I may be mortal, but what version of yourself could do this? Think of an alternative universe. Think of an alternative way. Think of yourself virtually. Whatever, it's a design thinking exercise that you do to yourself to make yourself believe that what doesn't seem attainable is possible under these conditions. Then you start thinking, well, Science, technology, engineering, art, map. Art allows you the innovation and imagination. Map allows you the competition to get the data science. We're doing a massive data science project capstone right now for the data, right? We're doing building you, working with Epic Games right now. We work with Unity. We're doing Microsoft. We're Microsoft startup partners. So we have their architecture of Minecraft. That's the art, right? Interactive. Um, science, cognitive science. I talk about cerebral warfare. It's in the mind. It's the mindset. How do you do cognitive behavior on your own self to keep on programming your mind that it is possible? That audacity of hope, it is possible. It is possible. Giving yourself that belief. Not what if I fail, everybody fails. Oh, they're going to laugh at me. <laughs> okay, they laugh. If you're securing yourself, okay, let's see who laughs. He who laughs last, laughs the best. Okay, they laugh. I'm still going. I got a chance to be in the game. So I tell the next generation, work on getting in the game. Don't leave your spot in the game. Chuck D from Public Enemy told me that. And I ran up on him and he was like, young brother, you're going to get your shot. And he was, I was like, when? He was like, listen, I can't tell you when, but as long as you stay in line, your ticket going to come. Don't leave your spot. That means don't compromise your opportunity. You're a CMU student, engage with the Schwartz. Because that's your opportunity. That's your ticket. That's your gateway. When you come here, don't waste time. Learn about who's speaking. Learn about the community. That's why you pay in, what, $90,000 a year? Oh, I'm getting a piece of paper. No, it's not about the piece of paper. It's about the network. It's about who you know. It's about leveraging the community. Don't be jaded in your own isolation. Network with your community. I'm part of Howard's community. I'm part of CMU's community. I'm part of Syracuse's community. And I'm able to use those relationships for decades. I'm showing you guys pictures of us here 12 years ago. We're still here. Because we're leveraging the community. It's not about, oh, you know what? This invoice didn't come in. Oh, we're done. No. How am I going to find it? There's money out there. How am I going to figure it out? And I'm an animal on that. I'm a cyborg on that. You know, cybernetic attack based on raw and militant rats and killing them black with my spectacular yacht. I get in that mindset. That's the great deity die. Now you got to merge. Yeah, neural link. I was on that since like, that's a rap from like 97. Come on, man. I'm not impressed because I'm like me as a teenager. I ain't had none of that. I was a kid going city to city, hood to hood. 
trains in New York, trains in DC, hand to hand, selling this tape. I made this tape in 1996. This tape predates his life. Took that to millions. So I'm like, what you gonna tell me? I ain't leverage no capital. I leverage my word. In the streets, it's something better. It's your integrity. You're leveraging your credibility. Never compromise your integrity. Don't do something just to do it. Your word is your bond. The biggest thing you have is your name, your brand, your sense of identity. Being true to yourself. It doesn't matter if nobody else agrees to it. True to yourself so that when people deal with you, they know that they're dealing with something authentic. Don't be a weather vane. Oh, this is hot today. This is hot tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No. Stand 10 toes down on who you are. It's going to come. If you're true about it, it's going to come to you. That's what I did. I'm not changed. It's like, yeah, man, Demola, he ain't wild. I'm wild. Look at all the things I've done. Where's the game now? What are they talking about? Oh, we need to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the evidence. I told y'all that years ago. You didn't see it though. I saw it, but now I gotta be like Battier. Build a toll booth and you gotta come through where I'm at. Because you gotta pay me the toll of admission because you don't know how to get in there. It's a wild, wild west. I gotta think like Marco Polo. This is an uncharted territory of digital life, but I already navigated it. I already saw the threads of where it connects. So that's value. That is, so for people, always be open to hear the wisdom of those who have insights and then think, what can I build upon it? Because everybody's building upon somebody else. That's how scholarship happens. That's how math theorems are done. It's always building upon those who've come before you. Where can I take it to? Oh, this concept would actually work here. Okay, now let me take it. Okay, you know, here's, Isaac Newton, you know what I mean? Here's Archimedes. Here's different theorems that you could build upon to get to where you got to go. Well, this has been fascinating. I hope people, in, yes. Exactly. That you know comes with a lot of benefits of figuring that out. But I, I'm at the point where I'm, it's still hard, right? To maybe you know connect and stay true to your roots, right? And talk to folks back home, but also in the academic space of the industry, teach mates and things like that. So I'm just curious what it might kind of have for how you, how you bridge those those different uh, contexts and, and stay with your next ground. I always look at it as evidence based. Data science. Data science is your friend. Why? Data science is just gathering the evidence. Like what you see here, these are my artifacts, right? But that's data. That is, this document came from this date and this time. That helps with family, friends, because even if they're not going to talk to you, they'll talk through back channels. It's like, oh, he was right, but I can't tell him that. But you have the data. Be a good archivist. Like my good friend, Martha Diaz, archivist. You have to be a good archivist. You have to collect. When you're pioneering, you have to always, you know, Indiana Jones, I got to gather this, gather that. When you go into these rooms, you have to have evidence. You have to do your pre-research, right? You have to have your analysis of, here's why I think it will work. Here's my thesis. Here is some pre-research I've done. Here's my hypothesis of why I think it will be. I think this and this will be this. Then another good friend of yours is tech stacks. You have to be able to look at a bunch of different technology solutions and think, what tool can I use and amplify? So for me, I was like, oh, Minecraft. Why Minecraft? 
Well, it's a multi-billion dollar business and that architecture is something that is already used in education. I don't like this, I don't like that, but I could use this and I can mix that. That's your innovation. So that's some familiarity. Then it's like, okay, how about, I'm gonna mix Minecraft with Fortnite. Like Minecraft and Fortnite aren't gonna mix, but I'm like, no, I could do that. How are you gonna do that? Well, cloud computing, that and that. Like you take these different things and then now start making the intersection. Then you got the data science case of, well, how many people can you reach, right? So now you're telling about the opportunity. For the family, it's the data science. And then you also know that you have to compartmentalize your emotion. I read a book called Permission to Feel. My bracket, I tell everybody, grab it. Permission to feel. Because you have to allow yourself to go through the emotion. Don't keep it in because then it erodes you. As long as you are expressing your emotion, whether it's frustration, whether it's pain, and then you regulate, cool. Because that's real, that's human. But you don't let it deter from your journey. You have the artifacts for the family. You have the data science for people you're trying to collaborate with. And then always understand what is their perspective. What do your, what is their thesis? What do they do here? Carnegie Mellon is an incredible research institution. That's the core of it. Education is secondary, but primarily is research, it's theory. So what new theory are you bringing to the table that would enhance somebody else's theory and bring academic scholarship together, right? But at different universities, they have different things, different rooms, they have different things. And from there, you find out where's the common thread of what you bring to the table. If you're able to find a way where you and them could collaborate, then now that's a bond. If what you're trying to do really interlocks with what they're trying to do, that's a strong relationship because we have a mutual goal and you bring in a new perspective to what I normally do, but we could go there the same way. So it's sort of like, well, I'm catching an Uber. Well, I'm going here. Okay, can we, can we, can I tag along? Yeah, let's go. Right? So you have that. And now those intersections come in because you're just being yourself. But you find in that being myself actually connects with this, connects with that. You're always connected to the family. That's genetic. They're always going to be there, whether they accept and it might be their kids' kids. It might be a little niece. It might be somebody else that might read about it and be like, damn, that's what uncle was doing. Oh, cool. Right? Some people may just be lost. But maximize every opportunity you have. Always dare to break open and expand who you are. Don't be constrained to who you were. Think about who you can be and keep pushing the boundaries to who you can be. And that will open new doors, new opportunities, new horizons. Technology is exploding right now. What people are going to be interacting with three years from now is not what you've seen. The, the payphone is going to New York. The whole culture, when I was coming up, look, 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 I got quarters still. Like, <laughs> hit me on the beeper, beep, beep, beep. Yo, hit me on the chat. Then the Sky Pager came in and it was like the flip. Then the Blackberry, all that is gone. There's no Blackberry. Word. Culture changes, technology changes. Right? You have to be able to evolve with it. And that's the ability to think beyond where you are, think about the opportunity, evolve with it, change. Now it's about, now people be like, yeah, man, I'm, I talked to so-and-so. I'm like, did y'all talk? We didn't talk. It's like talking, it's like on the phone. I'm, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? I, 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 I messaged somebody, I DM'd them, you know, I'm slitting and sliding in the DMs and all that. And I'm like, all of this, it's like, what happened to, Hello? <laughs> what happened to, yo, on the corner, so we was politic. It's different, but you still have to be able to evolve with the times. In this city, it's a game for generations. I would say that you have unique identities. Like you said, you are women-led, you have a diverse cross-section of Black culture that people don't see, 
right? So it's like, because people don't see it, that means that there's a strong need for it because it exists. That means that you have people that are dying to have their voices heard. Amplify that. In our MIT incubator we did, it was like you need, in the curve of who do you want first, you need your evangelists. And your evangelists are those unheard voices, Black women, LBGTQ+. Those voices are marginalized in our community. So how do you amplify them? and build them towards what you're doing. And then you have a way of building comp competition, esports, right? So now you have technology to build that community around. You have a unifying thing to tie those people together, to build upon. That's your core base for your MVP. Those are your stickiest users. And I'm like, build that community. However you can reach that community, build that community, because those are your stickiest communities of passionate users that will stick with you because they're the ones that really need the product. Then as they start building things, like they start customizing their technology, they put, you know, bedazzling their batons and they doing that, then other people go and stream them or they streaming and people see it. Oh, I'm following so-and-so. Now they got fans. Then eventually you got people that's the riders. Once it's already blown up, now they're going to be on it. But those evangelists are the diehards. They're like, man, live ride or die. I'm going to ride or die with this because this represents me. And I'm like, build a way to build that community. Build a way to amplify the three of you. Are there a million people like the three of you? I think so. In the black community, majority of women right? A female. So already you got that. How many people are into those sports? So get to the data science and then the communication. Then what's our backgrounds? How do we find that? So it's like, I use what Facebook taught me. I would take like, I'll do a campaign and then I'll be like, okay, here's what this is. And then here's what this is. So I'll be like, I have a fan in Korea. Okay, that. How many people like hip hop? Then you start breaking down like the intersectionalities. And then now you start finding out who is the stickiest data point. And then you, you, you zoom in on that. And you guys represent a lot of passionate people that don't have an outlet right now, but will flock to it. You build with them, then it's easier to tell the story. Because for me, it was like, okay, you talk hip-hop entrepreneurship. Why is that going to work? And I'm like, no, there are people, people get money in the hood. They just don't know how to do it legitimately. And I'm like, there's an audience for that. It's like, no, it's not. Okay, I'm like, there is. And I gambled on it, but I knew that. So I was like, leverage that. What are you doing now? I'm like, okay, you got 300,000 impressions on the store. I'm like, I know. You got 9,000 downloads. I know. We don't get 10,000. I'm like... The resource though, digital though, is kind of hard because it's like how to get it. I like the direct marketing because I'm like, okay, give me a thousand, give me 5,000 flyers. Let me get to this mass event, hit everybody up. They're going to hit it up. They're going to do this. And then because it's digital, it's easy to monetize to keep flipping because it was physical. I mean, so I could be like, here's a mixtape. Boom, but I know I'm going to get money. Okay, even if I'm getting $2 a tape, even if I'm getting $5 a tape, okay, man, even if I'm wholesaling. In digital, the incentive with the Facebook, with the Twitter, is you got to get billions of impressions before you make any money, which is very hard, right? So I'm like, take it to the physical. You got to get to the events, to the engagement. How can you meet your audiences in person? How could you connect with people? which is why we do a lot of in-person work. Not because I don't think that I could do a higher SEO, but I'm like, no, I need to know who I'm talking to because I might have somebody doing something, but I don't really know what a parent is thinking. So let me spend time just knowing my customer. Then when I know my customer and I built that profile, now, now we can put money in because I fully understand the dynamics, the nuance, the trends, the emotion, the touch points. I've really spent like years with my customer. So I know what's up. Now I don't need to get there. I'm like, okay, I can ride with them. But you got to, in the early stages, connect with your audience. 
do engagements where you could get to know them. And it may not give you the big numbers at first, but it will give you the intelligence. Because the intelligence is what you're going to use to amplify A-B tests, all of that. Think of it like polling. Think of it like um, um, statistics where you're taking a small subsample that represents a bigger group but you still need to know that small subsample and small subsample intimately to be able to project it to a larger group. So get that, zoom in, understand the nuance, understand the ups and downs, really know that market. Then when you got it, now start getting into the tech and interactive because now you got the dynamics. The user experience would be incredible because you really have lived with the user. So like build your users, you got that. Now you got your personal story and now start amplifying to where can I find more people like us? Think about, I'd say Charles Xavier, School of Gifted Youngsters, Cerebro. You got to use your Cerebro to find more air, air likes. We say in the streets in New York, air like, where your air likes at? You got to find your air likes, build a community of your air likes, but you got to find them. They out there, they hide them. Build a safe space for them to come out of hiding. And when you build a safe space for them to come out of hiding, they'll be passionate behind you. Yes, thanks for having me. This was fun. It's the last day of Black History Month, so I really wanted to end it with a bang. And I hope everybody online enjoyed it, and I'm, they'll see this on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure it was pretty live. A lot of game. Peace.